Welcome to Recollections, the Middle Tennessee Voices of Their Time series. A look at the past through the experiences of Middle Tennesseans. I'm Bob Bullen of Middle Tennessee State University along with my guest, Helmut Schultz from Bonn, West Germany. A World War II combat veteran with the German Army and a former prisoner of war at Camp Forest just outside Tullahoma, Tennessee. 1985 signals the 40th anniversary of the end of World War II and many American veterans have returned to Europe to celebrate that event. Now we have a German veteran returning to the scene of his adventures in the United States. Herr Schultz is here as a guest of the mayor of Tullahoma, George Orr, and he's here to help kick off the 86 homecoming activities in that city. During this time, the trip has turned into a goodwill tour with stops in Chattanooga, Nashville and Memphis, and he's been openly welcomed by citizens in Middle Tennessee. Before we begin our interview, a quick word about Fort or about Camp Forest might be necessary. The camp was developed in 1926 as a training area for the Tennessee National Guard. Just before World War II, it was used for mil military maneuvers featuring the illustrious General Patton. In 1942, it was a scene of imprisonment for Japanese civilian aliens. By May 1943, the camp was used almost exclusively for German and Italian prisoners of war. After the war, the area that was used for the camp eventually became part of the Air Force Arnold Engineering Center. Herr Schultz, it's a pleasure to have you on the program, but I think all people are curious, why did you come back after 40 years? No, it is, there are many answers to this question. After I returned to Germany to that struggled and divided and defeated Germany, I promised myself I have to go back to America one of these days, one of the next years, when, I didn't know, <coughs> to say that land where I have been captured, where I have been treated so well, what we have never expected before, most of my cameras, comrades, and where we have <coughs> taught the first step into democracy. The way to think, the way to speak, the way to act freely. See, the be way before I was very young, when I became a soldier, I was drafted with my twin brother when I was 17 years old. And I'd only experience from that time Hitler was in power. When we were taught this way, you have to go this way, and we went this way. Never look left or right, you got to go the way you were taught to, told to. We were told this is the color black and this remains black, even if it changed the color so and so and so. We couldn't never have our own minds. And when we came over here, we learned that it is quite different, even if we read the time the Bible, but we didn't understand the Bible correctly because everybody was understanding the Bible different than God was saying. So, and this is the reason I said I have to come back to this land, to this country, as a free man to see these people, to see the country which I have never had the chance because I was in prison in within the camp. And these people treated us so well and I said, and there is another answer to this question, if you want yes. me to say this. Many of my fellow comrades, comrades died during prison. Never had the chance to go back to Germany. They never made this experience. Or they never could, let's say, change their mind or show that they changed their mind or that they said, no, that's the correct way to go. They never could be a good Democrat. So as I said, I have to see these graves, I like to see these graves where those soldiers are buried now. And I like, even if I have known none of them by name, and I don't know, even if I don't know how they would have acted, what they were, how they looked like, if we would have friends today. I thought 
it would be good. It is, was my obligation to them to come back and say, I'm a free person now, and you did not have the chance to come back. It was my obligation to them. You found those graves in Chattanooga, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. What kind of feelings did you have when you went yeah, there? Well, it was, uh, as far as a tremendous feeling, uh, uh, Master Solomon Dale from AEDP, he sent me some pictures before already from the graves. We found this out later on, sort of grave by grave. And, but when I was in the cemetery, laying those Germans between Americans, veterans, Union troops, Spanish troops, and so in the middle, not in the corner, right in the middle where all the soldiers, the soldiers of, oh, oh, they might hunt so well. I think that was wonderful. It was such a wonderful feeling. I think this should have been made known to all Germans. You must know that East Germany is not even allowing right now to fall up on German soldiers' graves. Fall up on uh, Russian graves, yes, but no Ger uh, German soldiers' graves. And many of them have died or killed in action in the East Zone. Nobody knows where they are. Now that this is this is uh, one. Uh, this is uh, you must imagine. This is one of my the feeling, uh, how you treat these, as you treat them as a soldier, they were enemies, but in dead they all combined as human beings. Again, they come and pray to one another. That was in the National Cemetery in Chattanooga, yes. wasn't it? Yes, sir. Now let me ask you this, in America we're having a lot of veterans reunions now. That's, yeah. that's, a, yeah, that's I know a big this. thing. I know this. What about in Germany? What's the attitude about old German yeah. units getting together? Yeah, uh, see this is, uh, Sometimes we're getting a hard time on this because um, after the war, Germany was, uh, let's, we lost uh, the war entirely and nobody wanted to see an army again, any soldiers. And this is, we have uh, s some parties who still think it's not necessary. They don't think it's not necessary to have a reunion. We have lots of reunions, but they are not, see, no television appearance, no newspaper news. They have their special newspaper. But there is not such a veterans day. We don't, yeah, we have a veterans day, but this is not the way we uh, it should be. And uh, it is hard to say and hard to explain. Uh, Germany is still, still, um, not ready to go back. They, I think it's, it's history, but I cannot, uh, I, it's hard to say. This is, uh, everything was bad. But say, forget about it. Now let's say this and this, but not forget about it in the good sense, but I get it in a bad sense. You were a youngster growing up when yeah, Hitler came yeah, to power. Yeah. Why do you think Germany so willingly followed Hitler? Yeah, see, in 1933, I was 10 years old. I joined, uh, Hitler came to power, I joined the uh, Nazi Jaws. And uh, he was a man, at that time we had about 8 million on, uh, uh, let's see, how do you work, uh, work, uh, workers? Unemployed. Without, unemployed, workers, yeah. And he changed it tremendously. Everything changed since then. And also the uh, ranking condition, the so we did not have any, uh, let's see, during the first three, four years was good. There's no question about it. Because the truth is that he made no distinction between rich and poor. The poor could build their houses and so on, so on, no grown up. This was for the first year. So everyone was planned and saying, oh, it's a good man, a good man, and so on, and so on. We did not see what happened behind the scene. Did you realize, you, did your family realize that, that, that you were headed toward war in the late 30s? Uh, did, my mother did, yes. My father, he died already 27. My father uh, uh, came, uh, we had a farm in South Africa, in Wintook, and he was a soldier down, captured 1916, and came back to Germany in 19, and died in 27. So I, never, I was born in Germany, in Kassel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we what were your feelings when Germany invaded Poland? Yeah, see, that's a lot. That's a lot to this. This is uh, I cannot give you an answer on this. Uh, well, a straight answer, because I'm right now ri reading a book. 
which uh, opens up the documents of the German and Russian treaty, was, which was signed. And this book is, is called Stalin's Wars, the strategic of the communist. They started off 1919, Lenin said it always, let's see, let anybody else fight for us and we'll take the rest. So Hitler was a stupid, more stupid, uh, uh, Stalin was the most intelligent man of history, that's what the professor said, he wrote this book, of that time. And Hitler really was stupid to follow the strategy of Stalin. So Stalin said, okay, we'll help you and you will so and so. That's what he did, and so that's the reason. If, for instance, uh, Poland, yeah, it's it's very hard. Poland had a, a, a treaty with France, with England at that time, but no one of those helped the Polish at that time, nor the Russians. How old were you when you went in? Seventeen. Uh, pardon? How old were you when you joined? Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, I came to France first. But the war was over in France. I was uh, stationed in Abbeville for a short time, and then I was transferred back and then, then sent to Russia. So you fought on the Russian front. Yeah. Well, many Americans are curious about that war between Germany and Russia. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your experiences fighting on the Russian front. Yeah, uh, Russian soldiers are poor, very poor. They're, see, they're uh, fighting by mass. Their weapons, uh, let's see, that's what I, we determined. Before land lease, you remember that land lease. Yes, Before sir. you send weapons to the uh, United uh, to your Russia, we could shoot the tanks with our 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter anti-tank gun. And after you start sending them steel and so on, so on, they build a T T34 was not more, no more possible. So we had to uh, introduce new weapons in the system, and then, yeah. I was, uh, my unit was, uh, was a unit, let's say, I was assigned to later. This was in 41, in, in, in June or August. I came to that unit in, in, in March, 42. Was that unit was 15 kilometers before Moscow. And then the winter time came and we were not equipped for winters. So the unit. Tell me about winter. Winter was hard, terrible, terrible. No streets, strategically good. It's what Napoleon did, he did the same mistake. They, didn't, they only had one street which ran through uh, Minsk, Smolensk, Moscow. It was the only good street they had. Everything was just mud and rot, but this was strategy. You're talking about the main highway that yeah, the German highway. They, didn't, right? they only had one main highway. And this was what caused a lot of trouble. And we, were, uh, we went in there with horses. I was uh, with the artillery, 75 millimeter and 150 millimeter. And we, uh, the guns were drawn by six horses each. And it was the only possibility, but trucks, we couldn't go because it's that mud was so high. What about you know. morale with your unit? Good, good. No question about it. No question about it. Because I have two twin cousins. They are four weeks older than we are. I'm a twin, and these are the sons of my, uh, the sister of my mother. They were captured by Russians, but they killed the shot themselves. Shoot themselves, what we found out. And they promised that before we got captured by the Russians, they said, shoot themselves, and they shot. There were two young lieutenants. One was tank, the other was artillery. And uh, one sergeant who came back from uh, the, uh, 56 out of the prison of war camp told us, my aunt, that one shoot himself and the other one, we assume he did the same. You know, we never heard a word again. Well, what was your attitude toward the Russian soldier? Yeah. Poor. Uh, let's say uh, uh, attitude was they were poor soldiers. Poor soldiers. I remember when uh, we captured some Russians, they uh, were poor equipped in their uh, clothes. They were poor, poor soldiers at that time. Their the clothes were not that good as ours. Their uh, food they had was they carried with them was uh, just corn or something like this, and wet bread, and so it was not as good as. And they were so. They were, at that time, they were happy to be captured. What about the German fighting men and the Russian population, the Russian civilians? How did you get along with Russian civilians? Good, very good. There, I must tell you, sorry, I was, for a short time, I have been assigned to a unit 
I can't tell you the name where it was because I don't know where the story goes to. <laughs> so, and uh, we were about, in this area, we were 12 German soldiers on recreation for four weeks. And this area was full of guerrillas and partisans. They never did us anything. We were invited for weddings and so on and so on. They did us not a single thing. The Russian men, the Pers, let's see, the few civilians are very faintly. We slept in their houses and uh, never saw any cruelties, like later on was said, um, and so and so. All the years I spent in Russia, I saw not one single shooting. I saw not one bad mistreatment of Russian soldiers in Russia itself, and so on and so on and so on. I didn't see what the SS troopers did, because I never was with the SS troopers. But there you have to make, as I said, differentiation between SS and SS. You were a frontline soldier. Frontline soldiers, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, tell me, when did you start fighting against the Americans? Where did that take place? Yeah, see, um, I was... Uh, the last uh, battle I fought in was uh, from uh, Nikolaev, Rikivorok, Odessa, Romania. And uh, south in Jesse, on the Prut, I was wounded on the, in April 44. I lost my eye to shell gun. Yes, you lo so you lost your eye fighting the Americans? Yeah. No, 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 I, fighting I, against the Russians. Russians. Against okay. the Russians. No, let's start there. And um, I was, uh, uh, let's see, with the infantry, and from there, from there, I was leading the fire for the artillery. And we were came out with 15 officers, cadets, and two returned, and all the three, 30, uh, remaining 30 were killed. So I went, came back to Germany. I stood in hospital for about nine months. Then they took the uh, uh, officers' stripes away from me, cadet stripes away, and said, "You're no longer fit for combat." And they assigned me a Russian prisoner of war camp. And I took it out, I said, well, only for two days, and then I quit. I said, no longer, because this was poor. Very bad, very bad. It's not, it's, I couldn't stand it. So I said, I volunteered for the front again, and then sent, they sent me to the War Academy. This was in January 45. And I was in a War Academy, which was originally uh, located in Bomberg in Poland. Poland. And uh, when the Russians moved, they were moved up to Lüneburg, Lüneburg, Detmold, and so on and so on. There were uh, seven inspections. So it was with a heavy inspection. Heavy inspection means artillery and so on and so on, heavy weapon. And then the Americans crossed the Rhine River in March 45. They said, OK, the War Academy will go into fighting. And then we were split into platoons. I got one platoon, and we were told, you would go this way, and then we moved back because there were Americans moving, moving. We couldn't find because we didn't have honey uh, artillery. We didn't have any. Uh, so we just had machine guns. That's all we had. So we crossed the Rhine, raised the river, and we were told to stay there. And there I was captured on the 25th of March uh, by the unit I told in my in the newspaper, to the newspaper, yeah. because I got that book later on. When did you know that the war was hopeless? Yeah, uh, we, were <laughs> we were so in well indoctrinated with, till the last day I hope we win the war. You still had hopes even? Yeah. You, you weren't yeah. aware of the extensive damage going on at home? Yeah, sure, but uh, the mor morale was good on the war academy, but after we came, uh, in, let's say, we came behind the front, let the line, you were front, you saw all the equipment, oh God, oh God, oh God. Didn't believe that. Were you, so we were, were you able to keep trip. contact with your family? No, because uh, we lived uh, after the death of my uh, my father. My mother moved up to her uh, parents to Mecklenburg, where they had a large farm, and she built a house on the beach near Rostock. And there she stood. So I couldn't I hadn't had it for almost two years. No contact whatsoever. She didn't know where I was. She didn't know where my brother was. My brother fought in the south against the uh, French troops. So uh, I actually never shot a shoot. So, and we were waiting for the next order, but the order didn't come. The regiment probably was gone. When you were captured, what kind of feelings did you have? Were you, oh. were you expecting bad treatment? Or? No, no, not at all. 
No, not at all. It's just a matter I had my, uh, I had a uh, vest uniform, and over the vest uniform I had some camouflage uniform, and on my steel helmet I had a pot of, <laughs> of, of a conserve, a conserve, or how do you that a meal, baked a conserve meal, or a can. Oh, no, rip not. off these canned meal, canned meal. Okay. So that's the first thing they took away from me. Then they took away from me my map pocket, a new, brand new map of it, and uh, my markers. <laughs> and we were, well, at that time we were, we got the best equipment, but not the heavy, the small ones. Well, how did yeah. the American troops treat you instantly? Yeah, uh, you mean combat troops or yeah, combat the troops? Yeah, the regular troops that captured yeah, you. Yeah, uh, the whatever. combat troops, hard. But it's not, I will not say unfair, I will not say unfair, but hard. The way it is. The yeah. combat troops are different than the uh, troops in the uh, way behind. So uh, we're never beaten up. But I uh, uh, just saw a member when I, uh, we marched 50 Ks to the next uh, uh, collecting point. We uh, saw some dads left and right. Young uh, Hitler Jaus was shot. Probably Werewolf, I don't know. Uh, probably stupid. They didn't know what they did. We didn't know what we did. So, and then we were transferred to Cherbourg. And Cherbourg, I arrived two days before Roosevelt died. You came over on a Liberty ship, On didn't a you? Liberty ship. Those yeah. were concrete ships, right? Concrete, that's right, that's right. And they were yes. built in World War I. Weren't they? Some no, of, some no, of those concrete no, ships? No, oh, no, no. No, World War II. <laughs> Kaiser. The Kaiser ships. This is oh, this was one of the best. Jeez, did you don't know that? No, I thought those. I thought the no, Liberty ships were built uh, no, in, in, in no, World War no. One. Well, that's they were World War Two ships. But they, they there's they, still two or three is somewhere. Yeah. I might be. I heard about that. All right, so yeah. you, uh, you were they're one like the others. Okay. They got about build it. I don't know thousands of this. So how long did it take you to cross the Atlantic? Oh, from the 25th till the 11th of May. Was that a tough crossing? No. See, I had, uh, I was assigned 500 men. Let's say I was the, uh, one of the only speaking English person. At that time I could, uh, let's say, speak a little bit better English than I do right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> you speak very yeah. and then I had a, a chance to go on deck sometimes and talk to uh, the We were treated very good, no question. Straight. What? Not no eclipsing or so. Straight, good. Like we expected, there's nothing, no beaten, no, uh, we got uh, the food, yeah. uh, we got corned beef and cakes and coffee, that's all we got. Well, what were you expecting in, uh, on arrival in America? W were the rest of the men excited about coming to America? What yeah, were they expecting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say nine out of ten expecting good. Only one said no. Did they tell you where you were going in America? No, no, because I arrived in New York, and uh, I was, uh, then I was operating on, on the appendix. I was <coughs> admitted to the hospital, general hospital in Halloran. <coughs> <coughs> and um, this is um, another very interesting story. There was, has been, I have been operated by a Jewish doctor from Frankfurt. And he was so friendly, I was really darned. He was a captain. I forgot his name. Nason, I don't know. But his he was name. a Jewish doctor from Frankfurt? He was originally from Frankfurt. He immigrated in 1936. Yeah. So you talk with him quite yeah, a bit? Yeah, quite a bit. And he had a good attitude about yeah, it? Yeah, uh, yeah, good attitude, yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, what we kind were young. We were young. Yeah. And we were officers cadet, and we were young. And, and see, they made, they made differentiation between the youngs and the oldest. Had uh, you been around Jews very much before the war? City, uh, yeah, yeah. In my class, we had three or four. What kind of attitudes did you have? Good. Then? No, no, no problems. Uh, see, uh, we d uh, didn't uh, look through. We didn't. I didn't read my cups, <laughs> and I didn't know that uh, we uh, read uh, uh, it. We just to were told the Jews are no good. So, well, when you it's true or not? How I did just, you? I was telling you. I just received a book from Israel. It was a big Whitmo, in acknowledgement of German Israel relationship assigning this book and so and so because it's uh, 
I think it was uh, this was I was that's what I heard uh, still hurts us. Did it's you go from again. did you go from New York to Tullahoma by train? By train, Pullman train, sixteen men, sixteen guards. <laughs> it served by Nico Car. So what are some things you remember from that train trip? Well, yeah, we were sitting in a Pullman. We were at a Pennsylvania station, six oh five. <laughs> 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 and uh, I remember we were standing on a platoon. Let's see, and uh, 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 since I uh, wore a steel helmet, I didn't have a helmet, so I grabbed me the cap top from a navy and put it in like a barrette. <laughs> so that's not what I remember. And uh, people were passing by, I didn't say a word, so we were assigned one Pullman wagon, and I was sitting here, there was a guard with a gun, and there was a servant coming, serving me. We had 16 officers, cadets, or officers, and 16, 16 guards. And we had our own smoking room, right? and we were sleep, had our sleeping compartments. It was very good. What did, you, what did you think of the countryside as you traveled south? Very good, very good. This, uh, see, this is what I was very interested in, the difference, uh, uh, to know the difference uh, of the north and the south and so and so. So uh, I remember since we, uh, Left New York in the afternoon, we went through, most of the time we went night, through the Appalachians. And then we arrived, uh, 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 we all means it must have been Chattanooga, and I think it was Nashville, and we arrived some station and where we got, the next morning we got a lunch package. We waited there, it must have, could have been Chattanooga, I don't know. But then we went through uh, Tennessee and saw Tennessee River first and saw the country and I thought there's nothing different between Germany and uh, so on. And this was what uh, got me upset. Uh, later on, it comes a little, a little bit more to that. Yeah, and then we arrived to the home. It was a little tiny station. And I still remember the farmers with their, with their horse wagon. Let's see, was unloading or loading corn or milk? I don't know, but I still remember that. And then we uh, arrived there on a sunny, hot day. It was in June, because I stood in New York for about, oh, from 11th May till beginning of June, first of June, so. Memorial Day was still in, in Halloran, in New York. I remember that. Memorial Day, and they flagged all the graves with the American flags, I remember that. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Now, do you remember yeah. uh, uh, the atmosphere in the camp when you arrived? How were the other yeah, German different. prisoners acting? Yeah, it was different. Uh, you must remember, uh, let's say, most of the prisoners, let's say, there were three types of prisoners. Africa, 43, well indoctrinated, mm -hmm. good, disciplined. Invasion, 44. Those from Russia. Invasion. I mean, no, from no, uh, from uh, Normandy. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, from Normandy. the Normandy invasion. And 45, we. Yeah. Now, was um, not easy. Sometimes they wanted us to explain how we ca were captured, why we were captured, why we lost the war, and so and so and so and so. And it was hard to get this straight to them because it, uh, because 43 since then was a long time. Yeah, it was quite a different uh, of opinion, and but uh, nevertheless, uh, I didn't care too much about that. I attended school, learned history, learned mathematics. So you had a chance to go to classes while yeah, you were yeah. in prison. Yeah, yeah, well, we didn't work. Who taught those classes? Germans. 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 Did. Germans organized it. Uh, German organized it, and we got uh, uh, exam sheets, uh, but I never finished one because uh, three months is not long enough long enough, and it was well organized, and this was by the colonel, by camp command. And then I remember that we had a camp composition, who was building the best for garden, planting, and it was very nice, uh, building German castles in miniature like this, and it was pretty nice. We had our own band, and this band was led by uh, people of Fortwinger, Fortwinger, you remember Fortwinger? Was is one of the most uh, famous. How do you call it? Bernstein. Conductor. Bernstein. Yeah. Uh, Bernstein. Yeah. So you had music in the camp. The music. We had a theater, and uh, I remember we uh, saw movies. 
I, the first time I saw it was Conflict, a movie of con uh, Conflict, and uh, Humphrey Bogart was starring. And I didn't know Humphrey Bogart. And I saw that movie Conflict three or four years ago again. And then I found out there was Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> I didn't know that. Were the yeah. Italians in the prison? No. No. Not I don't at remember all. seeing any Italians. Just no, not at all. No, no. Not at all. They divided those from us. Now, were there the some place. Germans there that just refused to accept the idea yeah, that Germany uh, had see, lost? See, I didn't catch much about this. I didn't watch it. The war's over. How did the guards treat you down at Tullahoma? Good. No question about it. There's no, no complaint about this. Nothing. If I would have complained, I would not have had the divide to come back. Yeah. All yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. They divided officers from the yeah, enlisted yeah, men, yeah, and yeah. officers did not work. Yeah. So officers, what, cadets, and, and, and the enlisted personnel, and officers were divided. So you fellows did what besides take yeah. classes? Playing around, gambling, and, and gambling? reading. Reading, reading yeah. gambling. What about playing soccer? Did you play soccer? Shock, yeah, we built a, a, a soccer team. and uh, They had a, a, a soccer field. It was uh, built up by prisoners. It was already there when I arrived there. Was uh, really uh, well organized. There was no question about it. the meal was uh, were uh, uh, made by German cooks. But that time you remember, must remember that what we didn't know. I arrived. I arrived in America when the war was over. Before Amer uh, the war was over, the uh, meals were much better than after that. But we didn't know this. We saw the meal, we, we, which uh, what was served to us, which was served to us the way it was served was because we didn't have enough to eat over there in Germany. And we had German cookings, uh, let's say, uh, soups and sauerkrauts, and we had enough. It was well, real good. When you and again, oh, when, you were captured, when you were captured, what kind of physical condition were you in? You'd been fighting in Russia, and then you'd been yeah. fighting in Romania. And you must have yeah, been run down. You'd already lost good. your eye. Yeah, no question. No good. good. Better than now. How much did you weigh? You remember how much you weighed? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, sure. Fifty-four. That's not much. Fifty-four up to sixty pounds. That's is that another pound like you have. That's uh, it's, it's different. I have to convert this. Okay, and, well, yeah. so but you were you were almost skin and bone. Oh, skin you? and bone. Yeah, skin I'm telling and bones, you. All right. yeah. Now, yeah, but again, lots. at the camp, at the camp in Tullahoma, do yeah. you remember American civilians coming down and looking at you people? Red Cross, Red Cross. Then I remember we got um, sometimes we had uh, some packages, and these packages were soap, juice cream, brush, and menin. Menin was the first mm -hmm. came, and the first thing I bought over here was menin because <laughs> I still smelled it. <laughs> Never had it so good. Never had it so good. That's what they said. That was true. Towel. And took this away. I still have that towel, which I received here in Tennessee. What did you do with your uniform? Yeah, we had to keep them in shape. And we were told not to change anything, not to take even to take this up. Or our um, medals and uh, stripes and so on, ranks and so on. So we were, and because uh, I remember. Uh, Colonel Brown, he must be, it uh, must have been, his name must be Brown. I remember he uh, has been uh, promoted from lieutenant colonel to full colonel. A day before uh, we had a last roll call in the theater, and he said, any soldier, we will have a <coughs> roll call man, we will see your uniforms, and every one who has not a complete uniform will stay in the camp. So we had to have a complete uniform. And I had my brand new uniform, which I had, still had it. But we received, in addition to that, American uniforms, khaki, and also the winter uniform. However, it was just passed it on POW, but good. What were the barracks like down there? Yeah, the barracks, uh, uh, yesterday we were out in the municipal uh, airport and saw three barracks standing out of none of those. Jesus, it, it is uh, out there in front of Camp Forest, there's none left. But there are three staying. And I still remember where I was sleeping in. I was uh, coming in right side. It was a small room, and uh, well, it was my bed. Yeah. Are there any Germans buried in Tullahoma? Say it again, please. Are there any German soldiers buried in Tullahoma? No longer. No, all of them were moved to Chattanooga. All in Chattanooga. All right. Yeah. And shortly before I arrived, I was told an admiral uh, committed suicide. 
He was from Königsberg, and uh, later on we found out this probably was a general, not an admiral, because there's a general buried. And I called the German War Grave Commission and to find out who, where he was from. And the date is only almost correct. And he said, uh, now they said, uh, he from, was from Königsberg, and probably he couldn't stand it because uh, Königsberg is Russian. Yeah, and this is probably the reason. Because Do you remember any American families and citizens coming no. from the countryside, coming around in and, and just looking at you people in prison? No, no, uh, no. I only remember once when one, one uh, car passed by and said in German, in German, Hallo Landsleute, that's the only thing, and then the guards came out and uh, he had to go away. There are many people around here as children remember saving up yeah. their gas coupons and going down to see, to look at the Germans in prison, but you don't remember seeing no, people coming no, around no, no, like no. that? I never thought it, no, 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 I was not in the Sioux. <laughs> Did you ever go out on a work detail? No, never, never. And this probably was a mistake. I uh, would have gone because I, uh, probably then I would have seen some more of the country, but we were not allowed to. So this is... Did you have any contact at home? Were you able to write letters back to Germany? Yeah, we were able to write, my, but my mother never received it. Never got Later it. she told me that. What happened to your brother? Yeah, he was captured. Uh, he was not captured. He was hardly heavily wounded on the leg down in, in South Germany. And he was in the hospital when uh, the troops or the war was over. So he stood in the South and after I came back to Germany, well, there's another story. See, this is uh, only personal, a person could be, a prison of war could be discharged, or f as the soldiers could be discharged from being a prison of war when they had their hometown in the west zone. So I had to figure something out, and I found out that my uncle was living in the west zone and my aunt was living. So I gave this address up and so I could, was one, I think, was with uh, one of the first transports home in October, nearly 40 years ago. Were Almost you a, October, November. Were you allowed yeah. any uh, magazines or yeah, reading yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, newspapers yeah, yeah. into the camp? Yeah, I remember Life magazine. My Life magazine and uh, uh, it was another magazine. Uh, what was I, did, I don't know how we got this magazine, but see, uh, uh, it's mostly in the hospital, in the station hospital. Probably sh the nurses later put it down, so. And I remember one nurse, and one nurse, she came in every morning. She was a colored nurse, a big fat colored co uh, captain. And she said, every morning she said, she came in and said, get your room, clean your room, then you get your newspaper. Every <laughs> morning she had the same thing. <laughs> you had uh, never been around any black people before, had you? No, never, never. What was the German attitude toward blacks? No, we had no, uh, no, you couldn't evaluate them. You couldn't. You just we didn't know make uh, we didn't make uh, no differentiation. We, we couldn't uh, evaluate say bad or bad or bad or good or bad or so. This was not. Did you have trouble adjusting to the climate in Tullahoma? Yeah, it was really hot like here. Yeah. Mm. So th what about the winters? They were mild compared to what you. Yeah, were uh, winter. I never stood during winter time. I didn't, I didn't stay during winter time over here. So I, as I told you, you I were here five months. Yeah, I was uh, let's see, uh, arrived in May. And until uh, sort of June, when was when is Memorial Day? Memorial Day's in May. In, yeah, Memorial yeah. Day's in late May. May, late May. Then third of June, I was at Tennessee, Camp Forest. June, July, August, September, four months. When did you find yeah. out you were going home? Um, rumors were going on. <laughs> rumors. <laughs> Always rumors in the army. Yeah. <laughs> rumors. <laughs> oh, it was nice to. It was better to read newspaper than to listen. To to listen to rumors and read newspapers. <laughs> well, tell me about your trip home. Yeah, we were shipped uh, home on a 23,000 ton ship, the former German Lloyd steamer Alexander. It was a troop transporter. And we were about on that boat, we were about two and a half thousand German troops, uh, prisoner of war, coming from all over America. 
And we, out of our camp, we were about, oh, I don't know, five, six hundred, our camp followers, who were there first trip. I don't know. But I still remember the way up to York, Raleigh, Hamlet. And there we saw, got contact with the first, was the uh, colored people in Raleigh and Hamlet. We never saw so many colored people before, so it was nice. They were dancing on the, on the, on the train, and we threw out chocolate. They were so enjoying it. So we didn't, uh, let's see, we enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. And even, also, you know, that nothing good was expecting us home. We enjoyed it coming home. You dreaded going home? Yeah. What did you find when you got there? Were you from what is now East Germany? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't go there. I yeah. go, uh, went to Essen. 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 Never went back to East Elm since. I'll tell well, you why. Were That's you able to reunite with your mother? Yeah, she uh, moved out of the East Elm in 54. In 54. And she. Uh, but you, you did not see your mother till 1954? No. Couldn't. That was quite a reunion, wasn't it? Oh, you better believe it. It was hard to read, uh, hard to write. Well, no, you telephone, you couldn't even make a telephone. It's even hard to make telephone calls through East Zone now. You can't imagine that. And nothing has changed in East Zone. Everything is stable like it was under Hitler, dictatorship. When you returned to Germany and you saw all that damage and all the destruction, yeah, was, what, what uh, went through your mind yeah, when you saw your homeland torn up? Yeah. I can't tell you. It's not, let's see, I will tell you, the day I was wounded, when I got wounded, I didn't feel it the first seven hours. I didn't feel nothing, just blood running down there. And after seven hours of acted, this, like I came home and saw that, the first seven months you didn't see it. But then you start living again. And then they start renovating everything. So, it was not a good time that time. We didn't have uh, enough to eat. And there comes Marshall plan, where he said, better feed the Germans, instead the Russians take over. About the first struggle about American and Russian struggle I heard about in the camp. Mm -hmm. And when I came back to Germany, I remember when I was discharged in Münster by the British troops, because when we were tra shipped over to the British, we uh, were in, on a station, on a tiny station. They were sitting right next to Autobahn, hundreds of German soldiers in brand new uniforms. And I was astonished about this. And they said, yeah, we're waiting for hours to go back. So m ammunition was posted there, posted there. Patton, he was, wanted to go further. He said, don't stop the, Ru don't stop the Russians. Go further east. You remember that? I don't know if it's this story. This yeah, is that's true. right. So uh, yeah. they we're going to use German soldiers against the uh, against Again, the with the Americans, with the Allies, because then, too late, you found out, of however, I think Truman did, they found out that there was something not done well. Stalin promised too much in Yalta. He did, actually, he said he promised nothing, but he said, okay, this has been accepted by Churchill, and who said it was an old man, so you can blame him for this. Do you remember the Berlin airlift? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, because the later on I left in Lübeck, and from Lübeck they started, uh, all 20 minutes they started from Lübeck, and all over Germany they started, British, American, and French. Oh, let's see, it was great. You were eating better at Camp Forest than you were when you yeah. went home, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, for the first years, yes. Yeah, Do you remember the war trials? Yeah. What did, what did the average citizen think about those war trials, seeing Do people like going on trial when they were there? Do we have to answer this question? No, sir, you don't no, have don't. to. Oh, okay, we'll no, move no. on then. All right, uh, what did you do for a living when you got back to Germany? Uh, so, I, uh, let's see, I entered the Army when I was a soldier. I, didn't ha I haven't learned nothing, so I went into an apprenticeship with a wholesale store, and this wholesale was cost-free, <laughs> so I had something to eat. So I had this, so uh, one and a half year, and after this one and a half year, I couldn't find a job. 
And since I was, at that time, I was already, already declared a refugee, they transferred me down to the south of Germany to, uh, to work for the Americans. And since 51, I got a job, I found a job with the United States Army in Landstuhl, Kaiserslautern, and I was with them till 1968. So I was with the United States Army for almost 19 years in different kind of jobs. I attended many courses with the highest race, superior classification, Fort Lee, Virginia, extension courses one year, and uh, a user media course at US Army Management Engineering Cheney and financial accounting, all different kinds. So I was branch chief, section chief of many different depot operations. And uh, I, one time I entered, I took over a job which was held by another, I'm not safe by whom, there were a $14 million shirt, short. They didn't know what happened to those. <laughs> And I was sitting down, there was two, I selected two of them, and then we found it out in four weeks. And we put it down to 40 cents, we found out what happened to those. And then I got a meritorious award for that. I think so. Yeah. And uh, So you, was, you found life much better once you found some employment with the, with the United States. Oh yeah, oh yeah, since, uh, see, uh, I, uh, 56, the German army was built up, reactivated. And I uh, applied to go into the German Army. But since I was a war officer's cadet in the rank of Sergeant First Class, so I could have entered the German Army as a Sergeant First Class. But they couldn't promise me to become a lieutenant because, yeah, okay. they had too many appliances. And I said, and that time the Americans offered me another good job and said, okay, you stay. And they made me chief technical staff officer of a maintenance division. And uh, uh, I stood there, and I mean, and, and made good. And then, in 68, the uh, German uh, Defense uh, Council from the German Parliament, a member of this council said, no, Mr. Schultz, what about coming to work for the German army? And I said, yes, I uh, gained so much experience, and I said, it's, uh, I will put my experience into what, for, uh, let's say, since Germany is a part of the member of the NATO, put, uh, put uh, my experience in this, uh, into the German army and I'll do it. And since then, I'm working on, NATO, uh, let's say, in NATO defense. We just have a few more minutes. Let me ask you three or four more questions yeah. and we'll be through. Yeah. Do you think Germany will ever be united again? Yeah, I'm sure. Why? Why do you think that? Yeah, uh, otherwise we'll be a stalker forever. Will be uh, this will be a, if this will not happen, you will never have peace in the world, because it is uh, impossible to have a land divided, where a brother, mother, son, daughter, cousin, cousin. Right. The people in East Zone, the things the same. The things stronger on that than we do. But there are some people in the Western world that still fear a united Germany. No, 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 no. We learned our lesson. Okay. I was asked this question this morning <laughs> again. We learned our lesson. How shall we go into Russia, let, uh, let, uh, like a stupid man like Hitler did? Did he? Didn't he learn from Napoleon? Didn't he learn from uh, from the Swedish king? You never can win a war against Russia in Russia. Never because the land is too right. You never can win a war in America, too. While you were in America, you had a tremendous change of attitude, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Now, did you, oh, see, yeah. did you see that in many of your other uh, fellow prisoners? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say in my age, my generation, yes. But this mm, 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 is weakened a little bit. And see, uh, our television and our newspapers are, uh -uh. Uh, that's my own, own opinion. See, the Yaws is not, they don't know what's really going on in America. And uh, for instance, this the reason is Vietnam. They cared about too much Vietnam. And in Germany cared about too much Vietnam. You should keep shut up their mouths. Let's say we have not the right to 
blame anybody else. You should first clean our house. That was my, and I kept it, you see. And then after the war, Vietnam War was over, nobody went on the street. Vietnam was starving to death. No one went on the street. The same happens with Nicaragua. Oh, everybody went on the street. Nobody went on the street of Afghanistan. See what I mean? It is unbelievable, but this is indoctrination again by special sort of personnel. So you think it would be hard for another Hitler to come to power in Germany? Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, that's for sure. Uh, absolutely. Uh, except left. Except left. And um, that's my fear I have. That we'll have another that, uh, left. What do you mean by left? I'm not. Yeah, uh, you're Hitler talking about was left right. wing. You're talking about right left wing and left wing yeah, extremists? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hitler was on the right side and then uh, I wanna, right. I want to close out with two questions. Yeah. The first one what's the attitude in West Germany toward the Russians today? Uh, minus 90 percent. <laughs> Bad. You have a fear of the Russians? Oh, yeah. Is there still a great deal of hostility carrying over from World War II? That was yeah, a, that yeah, was a, yeah. That was a bitter you war. You will not, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember this 14 days ago. I may tell this story again, but 14 years ago, 14 days ago, or a few weeks ago, we went through Hürtgenwald. Do you remember Hürtgenwald? Yeah. And I went there with my son, a son-in-law and my daughter. She's expecting her first child. And it showed us the places where more soldiers have been killed in action since in Vietnam, in this small area. They couldn't believe it. Then we went over to Maastricht. It showed us the graves of the Americans over there. And I say, everybody, even the Netherlands, and my son-in-law is in the Netherlands, should think about that. These men have not been killed for nothing. If Netherlands is not keeping tr in track with us, let's see, for instance, cruise missile, we have to, they got to be stationed. They got over there tremendous SS-20, SS-21, SS-5, and so on and so on and so on. You must remember, you don't know this. So you think those missiles have to be over yeah, there? Yeah, I got to be there. All right. Last, last question. What impressions do you have of America today? Very good. I was so impressed in the event of, warm, warm, welcome, and my attitude has not changed. I will defeat you, defeat you in, 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 in Germany as, uh, as I would be an American. I'm a German, but I will defeat you. I will never get forget, even if we have been enemy twice. But this should be the last, should have been the last time. Well, I want to thank you for being on the program, and I hope that the goodwill between West Germany and the United States continues forever, yeah, well, yeah. and your trip has certainly signaled that goodwill can continue. I hope so. So good luck to you in the future, and thank you. Thank you very much, sir. This concludes our program. Thank you very much.